Hi, in this video, I'm show you how to use conditional formatting in a pivot table. Now, a pivot table is one of those great analytic tools in Excel, but like any table in Excel, you can get lost in all the numbers. And one way to get your point across is with visuals. And conditional formatting is one of those ways to help you get your point across with your data. So here I've got some data from Microsoft. They have some dummy data that you can download. Turn this into a pivot table. Go to insert, pivot table. This is a table, so I'll just put onto a new worksheet. And let's pull in some fields. We'll do units sold for my values. And let's put product here. And maybe we'll do segment, right? Put a segment on top. And make this a outline form so it's a little bit easier to read. So usually with a pivot table, you probably want one field that shows the numeric data and another field that will show the conditional formatting or the bars. So I'm going to pull in units sold again and have this field show the bars. So go under home, go under conditional formatting and add data bars. Now you see when I selected this particular cell, it added a data bar there, but it also gave you a formatting options dropdown where we can have some other selections. So you can apply the formatting to the selected cells, or you can do it all cells that show the sold at, sold to values. Basically, it's everything. So now it's going to compare all the cells, including the subtotal and the grand total. Or you can have it where it just shows the sum of unit cells for the product. Since I selected in this cell here, this cell has the breakout of units based on the product, right? And so this particular setting here will show you all the conditional formatting for the units sold based on the product. So it's going to do a comparison here, it will do a comparison there, it will do a comparison there, right? So depending on which cell you select it, it'll make those conditional formatting option choices, control Z to undo that. Let's say I select it on the top here on the total. So it's going to give me a different uh, layout. So if I do conditional formatting, go to data bars, select fill, you can see it's just selected that. Now I can also do selected cells, which is just that cell or all the sum of the sold values, which is everything again, or this one. The third one is going to give you, let me select that, it's going to give you the sum of units sold for the segment, which is this field here. Since I selected this cell and then did the conditional formatting, it's broken out in the segments like channel partners and enterprise. So what I can do here is right click, maybe I'll collapse everything, collapse entire field, and you can see it kind of lays it out there. You can see that in government, it's the largest one. So that gives us the option to do that. So some things to pay attention to. If I move segment over here into the other fields, you can see that it kept the conditional formatting. But if I took it out and brought it back in, you notice that the conditional formatting disappears. And so unfortunately it disappears there. So you gotta be aware of that. Now let's do it again. I'll select this and go to conditional formatting, go to data bars, select that and have it for all the cells that show for segment. So it's gonna do that. Now, what if I also wanted to kind of do conditional formatting to highlight a sub-segment of this? So maybe I'll select all of this. I can also do conditional formatting and do the data bars and select that. And you see that now it's done the conditional formatting for this particular segment. If I expand everything else, there is nothing there, right? Now I can go back in, you can, you can see that my little tip there, it disappeared, but go to conditional formatting, go to manage rules, and you can see that I've got my two conditional formatting rules, right? The one for the segment, the units of sold segment, and then the one for the units of sold and the product. So since I've selected that range, it's selected it for me, I can click, double click on there. I'll bring up the window where you see like I have my choices here, right? And I can do, I can reselect it there or I can select it there. So it just depends on uh, where you select it. If you wanted to change stuff, you can do it there. Also, another thing that we can do here is we don't want to have maybe the same colors there. Maybe I want to have a different color, but similar. So I can look at that color. Maybe I want a lighter color there. And the same with the border. Maybe I have a lighter color there. Click OK. Click Apply. You can see that it's built that out. And you can see the reason why it's changed that is because I made the selection for all the cells. Let's go back in there, edit rule. You can see that it showed all the cells for the product. So if I go back and do selected cells and select my cells, maybe I just want those cells and click OK, click apply. You see it disappears for everything over there. Now, one thing to also note 
is that if I don't want these numbers to show up, I can edit that out or I can select this where I show the bar only. Now there's two ways you can do that. We can so you can have show the bar only and then click apply. You can see it disappears for that particular segment. Or another way to do it, let's click close and control Z to undo that. Or what you can do is select anywhere in the pivot table, right click, and we'll go to number format. And in the number format, go to custom. Let me move this over here. And what we can do is just type in three semicolons, one, two, three. It's a formatting trick, click okay. It makes all those numbers disappear. Basically, it makes them invisible. If you click on it, you can see that it still shows up in the formula bar, but it's invisible. And unfortunately, you can't fine tune it, right? Because it does it for all the values here in this field. Control C to undo that. So you can see that I've got my values here, but I don't have it here. Maybe we want to do the reverse. Go to conditional formatting, manage rules, double click that. And maybe I would, don't want that. But for the other one, the subtotals, double click that to edit it. I just want to show the bar only, click apply. It only shows up for that particular part. So there's a lot you can do with conditional formatting in pivot tables. Um, you can see that there's also other things you can do. You can do icon sets or you can do color scales. And with any kind of conditional formatting for a table, you can do the same or similar with a pivot table. Just don't go overboard, but it's kind of a neat tool to be able to visualize it for your audience. As you can see, you don't always need to get a bar chart or a line chart to visualize your data. Conditional formatting helps you pinpoint certain parts of your table to make those points stand out and help you communicate your data to your audience. To see more videos like this, click the banner at the end. <laughs>